Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Dale Hawthorne. The channel is named after me, of course. And I want to talk to you about uh, a certain verse you probably never heard of, probably never had it drawn to your attention. Um, but uh, it helped me out of underemployment as I prayed this and considered it before God. And unemployment, underemployment too, may be a real issue in the lives of many people today, maybe as the days go on. And we may need to adjust our expect, expectations as to what we're going to do in our lives. But as we look at ourselves, you know, without getting uh, uh, overly uh, worked up about it, and look at what's been happening in our lives, we may conclude that we're actually underemployed, that there are better things that we can do, that we can do more, be more productive. And uh, I think one big bellwether on this is whether there's been dependency on others in adult years and especially if you become an adult and you are still living at home with your parents after long after you uh, graduate high school or college or so on there's been that dependency there you may need to break that you mean to break away from the parents and get away from underemployment and maybe underemployment you know unemployment's obvious but uh, underemployment too may be a problem or maybe you're self-employed and underemployed there that you're not really making enough to support yourself. You know, you can earn from contracting, consulting, or your own business, but you really do need to be able to support yourself and not be expecting your others to be dependent upon them to support your dream also for years and years, months and months, but it should be returning enough to support you. So this may apply to you, it may not, but I consider what I'm gonna be sharing with you in a moment. But before we go any further, please click like and subscribe and uh, this will help the algorithm, and there may be some more people who need to hear this also. So, we're going to look at this one verse, which, as I prayed over it, thought about it, it helped me out of underemployment. Basic verse right here. This is the New International Version, Deuteronomy 8, 18. It's a great passage to look over, the whole passage from uh, all, ch all ch uh, chapter 8 of Deuteronomy, because it talks about how a time of difficulty can be a time where God tests us, proves us, and wants to, and is uh, guiding us to be deeper in himself and his word to trust in him. So, but 18 here is a verse he gave as the Israelites were about to go into the promised land and reminding them where the wealth that they would have would come from. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. That's five words in the English, three words in the Hebrew to produce wealth. Is that a good translation? It's passable. It does represent what the Hebrew could say. Um, as you mull it over the mind, as I uh, put my own background in Hebrew and Greek to some use, I took a look at it. You know, considering scriptural meditation isn't emptying our minds, it's filling our minds with the Word of God, filling them in what to do, what to think, how to pray. It's no no emptying the mind at all and meditating on this, mulling it over, ruminating on the Word of God. We can look at this and consider some, some things which you see right there. He gives us the ability to produce wealth. How does he do that? It's power. The ability is, can also be translated power, strength and ability, physical strength, physical ability, mental ability. And I th it comes back, I think, to something I so told um, someone at work, uh, a junior person at work years ago, that uh, what matters is what's here, your ability, what's here in your heart, and what's here in your hands. And if you're doing a physical job, what's in your legs, too? <laughs> uh, what's in your legs and hands are, so if you're doing a physical job. So God gives you the ability to produce wealth. And it's not a spiritual gift. It's, you don't find this named in the New Testament as one of the spiritual gifts in, like in 1 Corinthians 12 or 14 or um, 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter 4, so on. It's not a spiritual gift. It's not the power to witness either. As Jesus said, that 
in Acts 1 8 that the power to witness will become upon you when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses based on the way that God has created us he's created us I think we have to look at it in this way he's created us with the ability to produce wealth it has to do with the way that God has created you with the ability to produce wealth and produce uh, is also a word which it could be translated uh, more commonly make or do to be able to make things to be able to do things not just to sit around but to actually activity to produce what's translated here wealth what's wealth is translated could be looked at as material prosperity at one place in the book of Job this same um, word wealth could be translated business profit be able to produce business profit yeah yeah it's it's in the word profits in the word we can I would sum it up as to what God is talking about here the ability to produce goods and services which can be used to support oneself one's family and to be able to be generous to those who are in need around us and for toward the worldwide mission of the church goods and services which can be used to support ourselves such as if we're a farmer and we use the produce of the farm the livestock to uh, feed ourselves that can be sold to for money to be able to produce things or putting our work in there with our mind our heart and our hands and our physical body to produce goods and services that are marketable skills which others will pay us to produce for them to produce for them what they need and I think we look at this fulfillment in God's providence because that's a lot of the way that things were taken care of in the Old Testament as far as the promises of God they would take place in the warp and woof of life not a wolf is it uh, that that's talking about the way that God weaves our circumstances together and the enhance God would enhance our skills we provide the skills already enhance them protect us protect the fruits of our labor yeah protect us against thieves and uh, and doing stuff that's uh, where others would exploit us and guide us and how to live into the right places and provide us wisdom also this promise here was also given to the faithful and obedient Israelite and we need to see the first application is to the person who was there standing before Moses hearing this the very first time that Deuteronomy was being spoken out over the people of Israel he was giving him this first application promise to them but also I think we should look at this and say hey God you created me also I believe that you created me with the ability to produce marketable goods and services to support myself my family to be generous to be able to uh, contribute to the worldwide mission of the church so understand this and then take it to pray just as I said take it back to God to pray you you've made me this way give me the strength the energy to be skillful to be diligent persevere the wisdom to know what what I can do and I can say that God has given me that when I've prayed this over the years he's given me insights he's given me the ability to go a little bit further the heart to go on and do things the ability the hands the skills you know they've, I've had to develop them myself it's not they didn't come down by magic but as I applied myself on the job they came so at the end wealth is he gonna make a billionaire out of you I don't think so I don't think that's for most people I think uh, if we, everyone was a billionaire it wouldn't be worth very much and the billionaires that really do have a lot of money are working constantly a lot of people couldn't put out that amount of energy they wouldn't have the smarts they wouldn't have the heart they wouldn't have the, the ability but God can give them give each one the ability to produce wealth so at the end the wealth that we're looking for here the provision is God's sufficiency I don't think it's not wealth as far as being on the list of billionaires most the richest people in the United States or, or the world but if we have God we have sufficiency and we have all the riches of the heavens in Christ Jesus so this is another uh, couple of verses which I pray which I'll end with right now 
Two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Remove from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but uh, feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7 through 9. And we can see those as actually being a kind of an application, consideration of this whole passage of uh, those verses in Proverbs of uh, Proverbs, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7 through 9, about being having sufficiency. Sufficiency, what is we need to provide for ourselves, to be generous to others, is really what we need. Not to have billions, not to have a lot of wealth, not to be able to sit around and be lazy, because laziness is something that is a scripture does describe that we're not to be we're not to be dependent we're not to be lazy but we're to be diligent persevering and using our wisdom so hope this has been helpful i'd encourage you to pray this with me if this is your problem for your guidance to look where the ability has been given whether it's been given in your head how it's been given in your hands and how it's been given in your heart to be able to produce what you need to serve God now and to know what it means to live in God's world, to live with the Heavenly Father over you. And to a certain extent, all Christians are involved in the family business of serving him now. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. I hope this has helped.